Well, it's that time again, time for another video, and today we're talking about dependencies. It's something I get asked about a lot. So I've got a number of tasks here, um, all of which have no due dates. So let's give them a due date of uh, next Friday. And we're gonna jump into the timeline, and we're gonna look at one of the easiest ways of setting up dependencies. So once we get to the timeline, um, and it's loaded, we'll see the various tasks that we've just specified on the 25th. We'll also see these little tails, which allow us to um, drag, oh, sorry, that's not worked, um, which allow us to drag down a dependency onto another task. I think this is gonna be fun. So if we drag that down to there, that's now dependent on that. So let's move that out. Um, this one, sorry, um, we're gonna drag down the dependency onto that. We can also drag them the other way, so we can say this one is dependent on task three. And um, back to the old way again, don't click on it. Um, task five is dependent on task four. I'm then gonna move these various tasks out and to different dates. And what you probably saw just then is that task moved on. Now, before I get into that, let's talk about dependency management options. There's three options, really. The first one is that it maintains the buffer. So that means that as you move something from the 6th to the 8th, uh, for, sorry, where the dates are the 6th and the 8th and they have a dependency, as you move the 6th to the 8th, the 8th will move to the 10th, unless the 10th happens to be a weekend, in which case it will move on if weekend awareness is on. The next option, which is the one that's selected by default, is the consume buffer. What that means is as it moves from the 6th to the 7th, the gap gets closer. It doesn't push on the next task. Then the third option, which is um, one that I really never understand why anyone would want, but I'm sure there are use cases, is the none option. So effectively what happens then is as the task that um, is dependent on the first task, as the first task gets pushed on, it goes past the dependent task. So effectively the dependent task needs doing before the task on which it was dependent, which seems very strange to me, but that's just the way things are sometimes, I suppose. Now, um, how does that translate into moving dates around? We had a lot of questions following the video that I put up um, a couple of weeks ago on some peculiarities of Asana around the um, dependencies within a list view. So people were thinking that they'd be able to go into a task, change the date, and automatically would move all of the dependent tasks the corresponding amount, but that's not how it works. You had to have to actually go up here and click on update and then change that date in order for it to then change the, the, the date of other dependent tasks. So um, quite a lot of confusion around that. Obviously you can solve that just by clicking that update button first. Um, the other way to do it is to go into the timeline and actually move what you want. So let's say for example, everything's going swimmingly, we've got a bit of time this week and we can move this, uh, sorry, this coming week, and we can move this forward, we can then go to the last dependent task and move that back, and that will push everything back so that that task that was due on Friday is now due on Monday, and it pushes everything back because they're all dependent. If, for example, which is more often the case, someone's gonna be a bit slow coming back to us, and this task now won't get completed to the 31st, we can move that to the 31st, and everything else gets pushed backwards in the same way. You'll notice that um, task three gets pushed to the fourth because there's a weekend here. I hope that helps to make sense of some of the ways that dependencies work within Asana. If there's any questions, please comment below. Um, I've also noticed a lot of people that are watching these videos, I think probably about 95% of them are not subscribed. So please do subscribe, please like the video, and please check back soon for another video on how to make Asana work for you. Cheers.